I'm joined now by Olivia Troy, a former senior advisor to then Vice President Mike Pence. We advised him on matters of homeland security and counterterrorism. So, Olivia, I want to ask you, you've worked closely with Mike Pence. Is he making himself when he's talking about himself when he says he wants better options in 2024? I certainly think so. I'm, he might as well just say, I'm running. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run. Um, and I think he needs to start to distinguish himself from uh, whatever the candidate platform is going to look like. And right now it's Trump. So, you know, Olivia, something that I've always found fascinating about Mike Pence is that he never is forthcoming with what he's thinking. I just I remember that picture of him in the corner with his eyes closed with Speaker Pelosi on one side and Donald Trump on the other and nervously saying, I'm really not here. <laughs> so it's kind of figuring out how, how is he going to have that breakthrough moment, in your opinion? Yeah, imagine what it was like to work for him. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <those moments> too. <laughs> I feel That's your fair. frustration. I probably felt that every single day before we went out, especially in, during the COVID pandemic with the with the press conferences when he would roll his eyes right uh, before he was going to go on stage mm -hmm. after Trump had been speaking. I mean, this is a reality uh, of the dy dynamic between these two men. But like, I think I I actually I think he needs to find his voice. <laughs> I mean, if you are if you are planning to run for president and you want to be in that Oval Office, start fighting for yourself. I mean, when are you going to actually take a stand for yourself and actually start to make a difference here? And so far, I'm not seeing that. I mean, I think it's, it's actually, it's, it's embarrassing. I think it's completely humiliating to him to continue to pander. And I feel like, especially this week, what I've been seeing is someone who's basically become a Trump apologist. Yeah. Um, and I think that's completely humiliating for someone who was almost killed by the man. I mean, it's infuriating to watch, to be honest, as someone who worked for him. Now, I mean, the title of the book is so charming, so help me God. A new survey published Sunday found that 46 percent of Republicans would prefer it if Florida Governor Ron DeSantis took the GOP nomination. 39 percent are still with Trump. What do you make of that? You know, I think that's interesting. I don't actually differentiate much between DeSantis and his demeanor and his policies. I've been in meetings with DeSantis, and I certainly, uh, his personality is not one that I would actually have respect for, to be honest. Hmm. I've been in meetings with Mike Pence. He's a gentleman in meetings. He's respectful towards people. I've seen him go out of his way uh, to greet people, to be kind to them. But I'll say this. The thing is, DeSantis, I think, has the personality that Trump has that brought people, the, that brought the attention to Trump. He's sort of kind of that person uh, where he'll engage in the culture wars. He'll engage in the mudslinging. So I think, you know, I think Trump will, will meet his match possibly. But he's also not as engaging as Trump. So that'll be kind of interesting to watch. But I think if Mike Pence is, even stands a chance, when you look at those two people in comparison to Mike Pence, who gave a town hall this week that I thought was just completely boring, disingenuous, and just like not realistic of, uh, of, of him, I think you've got a problem here. I also don't think that Mike Pence is doing much to distinguish himself from Trump. I, I, he's not talking about policy. He's not doing anything. Instead, it's just sort of uh, constant pandering to the man he wants to work for. You can tout policies from the Trump administration and say, yeah, I'm proud of the job performance or things like that. But then also separate yourself and not go after the Department of Justice, for example, like the rest of the Republicans are, which I, it's my understanding that Pence did that last night. He called it politicized. How are you different then? How are you different than Trump and any of these other people? You know, it's really interesting that you call Pence a Trump apologist because earlier this week, the former vice president told Margaret Brennan of CBS News that he would not be participating in the January 6th committee hearings. Take a listen to this. I never stood in the way of senior members of my team cooperating with the committee and testifying. Um, but Congress has no right to my testimony. We have a separation of powers under the Constitution of the United States. Um, and I believe it would establish a terrible precedent uh, for the Congress to summon a vice president of the United States to speak about deliberations that took place uh, at the White House. So and you're, you're uh, closing the door on that entirely. Um, I'm closing the door on that. Olivia, first of all, he's no longer the vice president of the United States, so there's no ta no longer separation of powers that he speaks of. We have Speaker Pelosi calling him on film saying, are you OK? Make sure you're safe. Do not move. What more does he need? Why is he not actually presenting himself to the committee? Talk to me a little bit about that. Look, I think he's uh, trying to cover for the Trump base of the party, mm -hmm. unfortunately. I think he's trying to court those voters still, which I think is a losing proposition. 
because those voters were the ones that showed up at the Capitol to kill you, by the way. So let's not forget that in the background. But I think, you know, I actually think that's that that was disappointing because I think that he should want to talk to the American people. He should want to testify just like Cassidy Hutchinson did, just like Rusty Bowers did, just like so many others who sat there and told the truth under oath. Why wouldn't you want to willingly come forward and just set the record straight and say this is what happened and it was dangerous and it was awful and it should never happen again. And by the way, they came 40 feet from almost killing me and my family. And I don't ever want to see that in the United States. But instead, I think he's so busy uh, basically running for president now and trying to court that voting block that's never going to back, back for him. That, like I said, it's it's just humiliating to watch. And it, it's really, I think it's just bad for the country, too. It could make a difference. He could have made a difference two years ago. He could have made a difference on January 7th, right afterwards. He said, we're going a different direction, GOP. This is awful for the country. Let's do something different. Yeah, and I, I think what's so interesting is that the voters broke the fever, and I think it was because we were able to see so much transparency yeah. through the January 6th. I don't think anybody imagined how completely entrenched the administration itself was involved in this. And the fact that he doesn't want to testify, I think you're right, is not sounding the alarm on how dangerous the MAGA Republican wing of the party really is. Olivia Troy, thank you so much for joining me.